All right, guys, here's game two versus pod. Uh, this hand is really good, but there's no land, so it's unkeepable. I wish if we, had, if we had a land, it would be really, really, really good, but we do not, and I don't want to not risk, I don't want to risk not drawing one Swole Mulligan. This hand is much better. We have uh, Graph Diggers. It's a little slow, but he will not be able to combo off, and I do like that. And we have a Master of Ethereum to play into. So let's go ahead and keep this. Pod has a couple different answers to me. He could bring in like Stony Silence or something, and that'd be pretty bad. That'd probably be the worst. Well, I guess Kataki Wars Wage is actually worse, but I guess they won't. Play, they don't play Stony Silence because then they can't pod. So we'll just see. This hand's very, very, very slow, but we had the Graph Digger, so I thought it might be a good keep. Because now suddenly he can't, you know, use all his persist creatures. A turn two Arc Bound is nice. Puts us right on curve. And then next, we won't be able to play the Master till turn three, because our only source of blue mana is this Spring Leaf Drum, where we tap an untapped creature we control and have one of any color. And obviously we can't, you know, play it next turn and get the mana out of him for three. Or can we? Maybe we can. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm not doing the math in my head right. But we'll see what comes down next here. If it's nothing, that's good. Oh, a Glimmer Void means that we can certainly play our Master right now, and I will go ahead and do that. We'll see if he does. If he paths it, that's okay. We have more in our hand. So this is a very slow hand, but we have a lot of big threats. Next turn, I'll play the Dark Steel to buff up our Master, and then I'll play the other Master. And we're just going to be in good. Actually, I think I'm going to hold back the Master, just in case he has, like, a um, Destroy All Artifacts. Which I guess if he plays this turn will be bad because we'll lose our Glimmer Void. But so next turn we definitely play the Dark Steel because we don't want to get blown out here. It looks like he's not going to do it. You have to play that costs four mana. Yeah, just a Finx. I'm okay with that. It can't persist, like I said. So we draw to the Dark Steel. Let's play our Dark Steel. Let's go ahead and play Spring Leaf to buff up our guy a little more. And then let's go ahead and animate Blink Moth. And we'll be attacking here for eight, because I do not want to lose my Arc Bound just yet. Well, I guess I could sacrifice the Spring Leaf, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to attack with everyone and then sacrifice Spring Leaf if he blocks. No, I don't want to attack with him, because I have to sacrifice two artifacts, actually. So for now, we attack for eight, and I think that's enough to make him block. Or not. So yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. I really thought I was going to be playing um, Merfolk, but I guess this is working out for us just great. I don't think we would have gotten been nearly as fortunate. He's going to actually play... Oh, Phyrexian Metamorph, okay. I don't think we would have done as well if we had to um, play Merfolk here. Also, he's like out of cards. This is really good. So we'll play Darksteel. We'll go ahead and play our Midnight. We'll go ahead and animate Blink Moth. And let's go ahead and get Ink Moth as well. Just to pump up our master here. His power and toughness is equal to the number of artifacts I control. So yeah, now he's gonna have he's gonna have to block, and he's not gonna get his persist because my graph diggers is out. So really we just had two incredibly good draws against Pod here. Yeah, so the persist is not going to happen. So we need to top deck something really good here because I don't see a way out for him otherwise. A path really doesn't set me back because I have the other master in my hand. Still Overseer. Still not going to play it. I don't want to run out all my threats. You know, just because we don't really know what's going to happen. There could, he could have something weird up his sleeve. I 
No arc bound shenanigans. Let's go ahead and trade with his Sphinx there. Oh, I guess he could Gavany. Since he's going to Gavany, I think I actually am going to go ahead and just sacrifice. Well, let's see here. I could sacrifice arc bound. And then put the counters onto the Midnight. But I actually don't think I want to do that. I could sacrifice the Spring Leaf. Actually, since he's all tapped out, can I just win here? Let's see. One, two on this. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think I can just win here. So let's see. Sack. Say so three. So that's six, seven. So it's yeah, it's six, eight. Oh, that's seven. I miscounted because I am stupid. Yeah, miscounted. Oh well. Say la vie. Hopefully we can just swing in next turn. That was dumb of me. I'm sorry, guys. I just miscounted. Now if he pass, we're in trouble. But I'm actually... Oh, that's perfect. Well, not really. I think what we do here is, since he has like cards in hand, I don't really want to like tap out and swing in with Ink Moth. That seems silly. Well, I guess I could. Let's not. Let's play it safe and just play another one of these guys. And then attack for a bunch next turn. Yeah, so that was totally my fault. I just played 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 wrongly. Yeah, I don't care if my guys get minus one, minus one to one to turn right now. So now I feel, do feel comfortable just swinging in. Vault Scourge is good. Let's go ahead and not do that just yet. So right now let's just go ahead and attack with everyone. Because he has no good blocks and he cannot gav any. Alright, and we win. So great round one against Pod. I will see you guys for round two.